So let's start off what it looks like for a major leaguer to actually commit and shift their weight. It's a full commitment to shift the weight. Hey everybody, it's Monday, March 30th, and we're recording live. And I've had a lot of requests about what does shifting your weight actually mean? And how far does it go? How far does it extend? How, how, how much do you need to focus on it? And the big thing is when you're shifting your weight, it's obviously a feel. And so everyone's going to have to experience it a little differently, which is why you need to do rehearsals so that you can find the feel for yourself. Everybody's going to have their own unique feel for pretty much everything that we do. Okay. That's the first thing. Second is if you're always looking for a new fix and you're always changing your swing every time you make an out, then you're always having to make adjustments with your swing because you got to change that if you make it out and you have to adjust your timing. So it's random and you're never going to get them to match. But if you get your swing locked in and even if it's not that good yet, even if you're in the developmental process, if you stay consistent with that swing, then the only variable that you're really dealing with is your timing. You're either out front, and if you're out front, you got to let the ball travel a little bit more. And you do that with your automatic mind, which we can talk about later. Or if it gets by you, then you need to push it out. Well, when do you do that? Well, you do that when, when you land. Okay, so the ball's released, and then you take a shift, and then you land. But we'll get into that. I'm going to show you on the screen. But before we get into timing, because the reason why I brought up weight shifting is because in the most primitive way I can explain what your timing is, it's transferring your weight into the ball on time. If you transfer pause and swing, you're not on time, right? If you transfer and then elongate your stride, you're, you're slowing down. That's not good timing. Because when you land, you got to be speeding up. It's, it's a... Ballistic. When you land, it's like a springboard, and you land, and then all that energy comes up through your system, and then your upper body just ballistically rotates. Um, you know, just like if you were going to grab some something and throw it from left to right if you're a left hand hitter, or right to left if you're a right hand hitter. You know, you, your your lower body has to stay firm. So before we're able to. Um, well, let me say one more thing about that. If you are going to truly use your body in a natural move, grabbing something that was heavy and pulling it from one side, ripping it to the other side, you know, from over there to over here, first of all, you'd rip it across your face. You wouldn't chase your face. You wouldn't go like that. You'd, you, you'd, you'd grab something and you'd rip it across your face. That'd be stronger. As a matter of fact, if I'm playing tug of war, I'm going to be looking in the direction that I'm pulling. I'm not going to be looking this direction as I'm pulling. Same, same concept. So when you're swinging, you've got to cross your face when you hit it. You're stronger, and it determines the direction of force, but I digress. What I was going to talk about was that you have to shift your weight fully. And, uh, of course, you have to feel that. And there's... And, in order to be on time, you have to transfer your weight on time fully. Now, that doesn't mean that you're going to go fully up over onto your front side. That doesn't mean leaking. That doesn't mean a shift because most people think if you shift real hard, then you're going to leak. Well, they, it's because they do leak because if they try to shift hard and quick and violent like you're supposed to, you know, maybe you're smooth at first. Okay, let, so let's separate shifting violently and the smooth part. So the approach is smooth, you know, from when the pitcher, your, your first movement is forward only and you start going toward the ball. But when you land, that's when it becomes violent. When that front foot comes down, wham, then, then, then you get violent. Okay. But the first part of course is smooth and, and you know, you're gliding into it. You're, you're controlling your forward motion. But when that front heel comes down, you better be accelerating. But most people, because timing is transferring on time, which means that front foot has come down, you can't stop and delay. That's why getting your foot down early and then hip sliding and doing all that, it's just, it's, 
you're defeating the purpose. But in order to transfer on time, you have to be able to stay on the ball. And if you have to, in, in to stay on the ball, you have to keep your lower body in position so that you know, you're over the plate a little bit and you're shifting your weight and that weight locks that front hip a little bit. Now, when you unload the back side, and I'm going to show you that and I'll, I'll describe it. When you shift off of your back leg, now you, you can keep your back foot attached to the ground, but it doesn't mean that you lift it off the ground necessarily. But because you've unloaded the back side, the upper body can rotate fully. You can take a full rotation. If you didn't shift your weight and you rotated, you would look at somebody and say, oh, they can't hit. And you'd t probably tell them, oh, you got to turn. And you'd focus on the turning. So, of course, they'd rotate their back foot and they'd rotate their hips. That's not the, that's not the fix for some person who's not rotating anything, who's not, I'm sorry, who's not shifting his weight at all. If you're not shifting your weight at all, you look stuck. It's because you're not shifting your weight off of the backside. You shift your weight off of the backside and you become free. Okay? But you need to learn how to shift off of the backside and not leak, but also shift far enough so that you lock your front hip so that your upper body can rotate against it. In other words, so that it can provide the resistance that's needed for your upper body to turn. <laughs> Some of you might be lost, so let me explain. Okay, so we're gonna go and I'm gonna show you. Okay, so first, so let's, let's, watch, let's watch the pitcher. Um, the pitcher's in his wind up. A lot of, a lot of young players will um, start lifting their foot early, randomly early, but the point is, is that timing is shifting on time. So if you can find a way to, to just stay on the ground and then shift when it's time to actually go, okay, here he is. So, so, so first of all, let me just preface this by, this is a young hitter, just started learning how to hit, and um, I mean, he was having trouble at first, but at the end, I'm gonna show you the improvement, okay? So this is what he was doing at first. So first pitch, high pitch, okay? So you might not have really noticed anything there, okay? You might have thought, well, what's that? Here, let me open it up the right way so I can go frame by frame, okay? So there he goes, boom. Okay, so what did you notice here? Well, first of all, the weight shift came. Now watch, he lifts his foot on time, okay, right about at release, but watch, his weight never actually get past the center of his body. You're not ready until you get in front of center. Okay, now that doesn't mean your front foot can't reach way out and get way in front of your center. But if you're behind your center, and if you don't commit to your weight shift, you're really not ready. So he wasn't ready on this pitch, okay? And then, if he was going to do anything, he was going to rotate from there, but he backs away, okay? So that's the first one. So you see he wasn't actually ready to hit, and that's common. Okay. He's really come a long way since then. Okay, so here's the next one. So here's the wind-up again. He's on his backside a little bit more now. And then he goes to swing, takes a little step. And look, he never quite gets even. So he's behind center. He hardly gets to center. And look at his hips. He starts to rotate. Okay. Now, he doesn't actually end up swinging. Okay. But it shows you he was already starting his swing without actually getting in the ready position, which means sh fully shifted. You're not supposed to even begin your swing until you're fully shifted into your front hip, okay, where he was beginning. And this is what happens with tons of players. Players, this is so common, I just, because coaches are telling you to stay back, wait back, okay? All right, so let's, let's look at the next one. Come on, technology. Okay, so let's just play this one. Pitcher winds up, and he goes and swings. Okay, so he pops it up. Now, part of, you know, if this is happening to you, you're popping a lot of balls up, you're missing them. You get a pitch to hit, you're missing your pitch. Now, look. So he takes a shift. First of all, he goes up a little bit, so he's, gonna, he's really susceptible to leaking. And then, look, he's not even quite forward. His body's moving forward but he's still in the center, his center of mass. He's not getting shifted far enough to get ready. He certainly, his weight certainly hasn't shifted into his front hip yet. And he's already starting his rotation. 
So that way the front leg po posts up, and in this case, it, it doesn't even post up. His front knee is bent, which means he's gonna leak when he swings. And so right now, all, all he has left is an arm swing. So all it is is an arm swing. And technically, there's no return. See, so transfer, there's no return. The back knee is just sitting there. It's not, really, it's not really doing anything. Now the back knee, you can see his back heel push back a little bit there. See the back heel pushes back right there. Now that's a, a, technically a return, but he's not able to shift violently like he wants to yet, okay? And he also caught himself with his front foot. All right, so, but what I wanted you to see was is that his, so he's not quite getting shifted in his front hip and he's already starting to rotate that hip, okay? Which means you're not ready yet, okay? Okay, so now let's watch the next one. Okay, so now this is like the emergency hack that happens all the time. Okay, the pitcher's going. He's getting, you know, he is beginning at the right time. He's riding and striding correctly. In other words, he's, he's filtering out the pitcher's motion and everything. But you can just tell he's not moving forward right now. You need to be moving forward, even if it's an inch. So, but, but he's not. And so there's really nothing you can do. So if he never shifts, he never even gets to center, and he starts his rotation, starts to swing. You, you don't have the sensation of the ability to swing like a major leaguer does, like a great hitter has a feeling that he could swing. If you're not behind, if you're not in front of center, you don't have that feeling. You're, and you're never gonna feel it. So if you're trying to stay on the back leg and you're trying to stay in the center, you're not trying to go forward, you're not shifting your weight and getting forward. That doesn't mean you need to cover a lot of ground, which I'm gonna show you in a little bit. You're starting to swing before you've shifted. Now remember, you wanna hit the ball with a semi truck. And right now, he's hitting it with a, the bicycle, see? And both of his knees are bending and they're giving way and he's leaking, got nothing. You have no foundation. In other words, it's almost like hanging on a rope and then trying to turn your upper body. You need your lower body to, as a foundation to rotate your upper body. Like if you were gonna sh shovel some sand, so if he scooped to his right and grabbed some sand and then he was gonna throw it to his left toward the pitcher, that's not how you do it, is it? See? So you can relate things to, every, to everyday life. All right, so this is kind of like an emergency hack here, as you can see, right? Because he really was never ready at any point, right? All right. Okay, so now let's see this next one. He's getting better and better as he goes. All right, he smoked this ball. Now he crushed this ball, okay? But we're gonna take a look at it. Now it's a high pitch. Granted, it's a high pitch. So he had to kind of come up on it a little bit. But let's, but let's just take a look at it. Okay. So he shifts a little bit further. Okay. Now that's a little bit further into the front hip. Not real far, but it's, it's, it's further than before. Okay. And his, his back foot stays sideways. It's further into the front hip. But you can see he doesn't quite get far enough into the front hip before he starts his turn. But as you can see, he's, he's starting to rotate. And his, and his hips are still sideways, which is good. Um, but um, you can see his, the bat's lagging a little too much. Now, that, a lot of that is caused from the connection between your arms, your arms, and your body shifting. So when you go to shift, you need to bring the bat with you and then your arms need to be connected to that back shoulder. So when that back elbow rotates through, the bat's going to respond. Now, if it doesn't, if you have anything loose, the bat's going to lag behind and that's going to cause you to foul off a pitch. In this case, he gets it. But notice he's pulling his hands in. He's pulling his hands in because he had to take, he had to create a shortcut to get the barrel on the ball. Okay, so we, we worked on that. Um, but as you can see, he's, you know, he got a little bit further into that front hip and off of his backside. Now, take a look at his back foot. He did do a little slide on his back foot. Now, what does that do? That lengthens your swing timeline. It takes longer to get to the ball that way. So in other words, if you're going to do all this movement, if, if you keep the back foot on the ground, you're going to get the swing through sooner. If you drag your foot, it takes longer to get the bat there. Plus, from this position right here, 
it's hard to generate energy from this position right here. If you're this far behind, it's very difficult to rotate with any force to rotate the bat through all the way around when you have nothing left. And then you, you can see, you know, kind of the lean back and the way the leg is right here because it's a little behind. Now you see a major leaguer, sometimes their foot will come up, but at this point right there, the bat would be all the way close to contact. So that's, that's the difference there. Okay. So he smokes that ball pretty hard. Um, and he got a hit on that one and you can see he's further into the hip, but he's leaking a little bit up, up over his front side a bit. Okay. So let's go to the next one. And so now we get a glimpse of the very first time when he started to kind of learn how to, how to do some of his rehearsals and trust me, some of these things feel awkward and you, this is what's going to happen. You're going to try to learn these rehearsals and wonder, you know, am I doing this right? Or what do I got to do? And, and as you can see, you know, sometimes, you know, you question what you're doing. Now, rehearsals are very well explained. They're very clearly explained. And as long as you're doing, you're not supposed to pause like that. Okay. Um, there's all sorts of pauses. Now he is working one hand at a time, but he doesn't have quite good control of the bat right there. Now see all these little pauses? Now he is trying to do some of the things. Now one of the things, let me just give you an example. Um, let's, let's kind of move this back here a little bit. Let's get him going. Okay, so as you go forward, there should never be a stop. Okay, it should never stop. You should just keep moving um, instead of stopping. Because if you're gonna swing, you know, if you're going to convert this in, into a, a walking swing, because this is what you got. Look, you want to learn how to stay on the ball first before you're able to work on your timing. Because if you can't stay on the ball, you're never going to be good at timing. So by pausing, if, if, he, if he were to swing here, say, that's, there's, no, there's no weight shift involved, at least, well, he's actually shifting here because He's actually doing a weight shift swing, but it's not with the stride. It's not connected to the stride. There's a pause there. Now, later on, as you get more advanced, I'll show you some videos where you're, uh, it's, it's a lot more fluid, okay? So let's see something else. Okay, so we go a little bit further. And now, once again, this is early on, just learning how to do it. Okay, that's a little bit smoother. He's continuing his motion, but notice he's going forward first. Uh, that was kind of a reach. Hips kind of got unstable there. See, see how the hips, here, let's, let's watch. Let's kind of back this up. See how the hips, okay. So the hips are, okay, so the hips are up here. Okay, the hips are level, maybe even up. Hips are level, and now watch, the front hip goes up. You don't ever want to have that happen because that ends up being a hip slide and you're never really transferring your weight. See, the weight's not really transferred because you can need to get in front of center to be ready, okay? But of course you're learning and that's the process. Look, you think that when you take about 10 swings, you know, in your room and you think, okay, what else can I do? There are so many things you need to do when you rehearse that you just don't know about. You don't know what to rehearse. And something as simple as this, if you don't have certainty of what you're doing, now that was a little bit better, it's a little smooth, but there goes the pauses again, because he had to think about swinging. That's part of the process. You're recoding the swing. Now, now right now, he's, he's connecting the front and back side um, with a transfer. Front side is moving, transferring his weight as he's swinging, and he has a little bit more control there, so that's excellent. Okay, that's, that's a lot better. Okay, so now we're gonna start to see how he looks a little bit further along, okay, um, in the rehearsals. Okay, so let's just kind of watch it as it goes. All right, so now he's doing a stride transfer contact return see the return okay and i'll slow it down after he goes through this whole thing now all the moves there are really good okay all right so so what he's doing here by going back and forth again is is rocking to set his hips to shift those hips now now, now as you can see he's getting his hips fully shifted so let me show you what it, what he's doing 
he's shifting, he's getting in front of center there, see? Now that locks that front hip. Now normally, now he's just, now look, if, if this was a real swing here, obviously he'd be leaking over the front side because he's not gonna swing like this, okay? Because normally, but what he's practicing is he's practicing making the shift fully first before he swings into that hip so that when he does stride, as you can see, then, as you can see, he's making a full commitment to that shift into his front hip. He's fully committing. Now, everything's sideways, and then he continues to shift, all right, and then he returns. So here's the return. He's gonna shift fully, all right, back foot sideways to stay on the ball. Remember, in this rehearsal, you're just trying to stay on the ball. And he keeps the barrel above his hands. He doesn't drop the barrel below his hands. Look, look at that. Throwing the barrel from his shoulder slot. Perfect. And then the barrel stays just above his hands until they start firing from the body. The barrel stays above the hands until the hands fire from the body, which he's doing great. And now the barrel gets just below the hands here because he just fired them off of his body using momentum, that weight shift momentum. There it is and he's unloading his backside. In this drill, we're focusing more on staying on the ball, so he's not, he's not getting off his backside as much, but that's, that's part of the routine of the drill, of the rehearsal. And then he takes a swing, and he's still pretty much shifted into that front hip. Now watch what happens next. He finishes and then returns. Notice how quickly, after his swing, watch his weight go back. He does the return. Now that keeps him, so he's in the center. Now, when you learn how to do this really quickly, then, you know, you know imagine this right here, 10 times quicker. Because <laughs> if you do this explosively, you can make it really quick. Okay, so he's shifting back and forth to ensure that he gets a shift and that he stays sideways, all right? You know, once again, he, he's shifting back and forth to ensure that he gets to the front hip and he, that he doesn't open up first. And then he takes his stride to get his foot out in front of his body and then he, then he turns. Now, one more thing I want you to notice. Okay, there it is. Okay, so his head's here. Here's my cursor right there, right at his hat. Now watch. He takes his shift. He comes back. So he went about 10, 12 inches, okay, which is about normal in a swing. And this is just a rehearsal, and, and, and we're trying to accentuate shifting the weight. Now, the, the longer you do this, the easier it is to cover less ground and still do all of these things and to not leave anything out. And then, and then of course, you're going to see this from the front. All right, so we'll see this from the front. So he's going to, and he's starting to swing a little bit harder now. So it's, it's shift, no, there it is, there's a swing. Now, notice his front hips. So he's going through a swing, okay, now watch, look. He's pulling off his swing here. So he does his shift, he's getting fully into that front hip. His upper body's getting through, bat's in the shoulder slot. He hasn't thrown his, his bat from his body yet. Look at the barrel, it's still slightly above the hands the way it's supposed to be, not a launch angle way below swinging up. He's not fighting gravity here. He's letting the barrel drop. He's using gravity so that as the barrel drops, it picks up speed. And then when you fire it from your body, then it gets below the hands. Notice his hips are sideways. His hips are pointing toward the second. I don't know what's going on here. Okay, so I had to stop that here. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> I don't know what happened. So I was recording that. But anyways, um, yeah, so you see the progression of somebody working on this. There are so much to learn. I mean, this was just a, a little part of module one, <laughs> a, a small part. And we interact together, and everyone's different. So I, th those who apply themselves, and and if they do the rehearsals, now I, I create individualized rehearsals for you, depending on what you need. Like I made that one for Zach because he needed that. 
So I made that. I just invented it right then and there uh, because I needed him to set his hip before he swung because he was quitting and like his swing, his shift was coming to a stop before he'd swing. But so now he's developing it. If you do that, look, if you learn to shift fully before you swing and lock in that front hip, you can't pull off, especially if you're leaned over the plate a little bit. You know, if you're, if you're leaned over the plate slightly and you shift, you, you can't open up. I mean, you can't, you can't pull off. You can't, you can't open up because, well, your front hip is locked in. Now, your hips are going to get turned because you've unloaded, but they're getting turned. They're not under four. You're not rotating your hips. You're not thinking hips. You're not thinking fire your hips any more than you would if you were shoveling sand and throwing it in, shoveling it from one direction, throwing it to the other direction. It just look, everything that you do in hitting can be related to something that's so common sense. And, and so the problem comes when each of us has our own unique issues. And because of those issues, we got to get way deep down. And you need empirical evidence to know that it's true. Fortunately, I have that empirical evidence of playing over 10 years in the big leagues, trial and error, failing, succeeding, knowing what works and what doesn't at the highest level. That's, that's where all the information is at that level. That's where the true information is. Um, and as long as people are, have a growth mindset and they – are gathering their information from that high level, um, from people who teach. Now, you talk to a, a current player, and they're gonna get, they're gonna tell you a feel, you know, uh, what they're feeling in a moment, and in the next moment they'll say something else, because the first part of your swing, okay, maybe you feel, for example, maybe you feel right about here you feel the sledgehammer feel like if you were to swing a sledgehammer but that's not i haven't even swung yet but maybe that's what you were feeling at the moment and then that's what you remembered but that's really not what you did so the next swing you feel something else in other words if you hit things get passed down and things get overheard and people think oh it's real important to to pull the knob i i see this in softball all the time Coach is telling him to pull the knob. Well, that's just a guy in the big league saying, oh, I really feel like I'm pulling the knob here. Well, yeah, before, you, you, before your hands move at all, before you start your swing, because, well, there's a lot of reasons why. Because as, as, as the sledgehammer falls back, if, if, if you pull the knob, it's lighter. The knob is lighter. Um, but you don't actually remove it. You don't actually pull it slide it across the body because then that's arm swinging. It's pulling your hands in. That would be horrible. Okay. Um, so that's it. I just wanted to show um, how you're supposed to um, shift your weight and the importance of it. So let me show you one last thing. Okay. So let me show you how you would do it in a more mature way course once you've learned how to do this and this is why you have to be meticulous about your rehearsals and understanding what you're trying to accomplish there's there's a lifetime's worth of things that you can do with rehearsals without the ball without the ball because as soon as you put the ball in play you end up reaching a little bit more you you lose the ability the opportunity to execute something perfectly okay and the goal is to is to train to encode your automatic mind, which is a million times faster than your conscious mind, if you're always trying to make adjustments, thinking about it and getting information overload. And then your reflexes are 30 times faster when you're doing it automatically. So if you have an urge to open up, if you have an urge to leave too early or to lunge, if you have an urge to pull off, an urge to leak up, an urge to leak up, all the things that you can do wrong, an urge to have your hands float or to, to open up and check swing and post up too soon and pop up and uh, um, you know, slow, slow down, you know, land and slow down and decelerate as you're hitting are all the things that we do wrong, fouling every ball off that you get that you should hit. If you're doing all those things, 
you need to be able to make the correction while you're standing in line, standing in line, waiting for your turn to hit, not doing it, just in your mind, mind, your body, your emotions, and, and getting the concentration ready with little rehearsals. Hardly anybody even knows what you're doing, but since, since you've done them, you can kind of go through a few rehearsals. While you're in line, while you're not losing your place in line, you can get your body ready. So the first time you get to swing, wham, smoke a ball. Because you know how to prepare yourself and get ready on the first shot. So let me show you some examples. So, yeah, let's get here. Okay, so, all right. So this, for example, is, you've probably seen this, seen me do this before. So this is a one directional, this is a technically a leak, but this ensures that you do not, this ensures that you do not open up. Now, as you see, I'm shifting, getting all my weight into it, taking a nice flat swing. I'm dropping the barrel in the same spot every time. My barrel drops, I'm hitting the same spot every time. Arms are straight, fully extended. Then I roll over and fold them, and I come back. And now I'm going into, this is a, this is a organized workout, where I took 10, 10 swings, and then I go into a stride swing, which I hit the same spot, by the way. I hit the same spot every time, right? Right there, I hit that spot. Well, I can't find where it is. There it is. I'm going to hit this spot every time. Arms extended, then they roll over, and then they fold up. So as you go over, you're always hitting the same spot, full shift. Now, that's technically a leak if I didn't return. I, I'm just – now, I wouldn't be leaking in that case because in that case, I would add an extra move. And this is an example of how I would add an extra move. So this is like a, a hitting – well, obviously it's hitting. So th this is old man, Matt. Um, so here I go, I'm shifting and I go. Okay, so notice something here. Okay, so first, okay, I'm getting ready to go. I go forward only, barrel stays above my ha hands. And I go and look, I get fully shifted into that front hip, fully shifted, the knees bent, because that's how you shift weight into the front side. You, it, if your leg was straight, that's quitting. Now it's gonna straighten out. Now, this was before my surgeries on both knees because I had them replaced. So they didn't really straighten out, but it straightens out a little bit. It was doing its job, let's just say. Your knees, sometimes when you're way deep down in your legs, they don't ever get straightened, but they got to do their job. Their body has to come to a stop, even if it's slightly bent. So my body is doing its job. My front leg is doing its job as if it's straight. So there I go and I hit it. Now, watch. So I get that weight, that full weight shift, that full commitment. Barrels above my hands. The bat's flowing from my shoulder slots. The bat still hasn't dropped below, you know, all the talk about the launch angle, right? My barrel's still above my hands right there because it hasn't fired from my body. The back foot sideways. My hips are pointing at about the shortstop. And then then when the bat's released from my body, guess what? It goes below my hands. And then look how long it stays in the zone. I mean, it, it travels from here to here. That's three feet and more. The other thing I want you to see is, is the angle, how I'm at six degrees, yet I'm swinging flat in my mind. But I want you to look at the ball. It comes into frame right here. Next frame. Is that coming straight down? Is that coming down at this heat? Does this require an upswing to hit at that plane? Of course not. Six degrees is relatively flat. And this was batting practice. So it, it, it was coming down probably eight degrees. But six degrees is pretty dang flat. So your swing needs to be relatively flat. Now, I was talking about the full weight shift. So I got a full weight shift. But guess what happens afterwards? I return. So my weight shifts and returns, okay? So that's how you end up back into the middle, all right? So let's go to the, to the next one. So then, so when you wanna worry about, so, so if, if you're worried about going forward, what would show yourself going forward? Would you ever shift that hard in a game? I mean, would you ever shift as hard as you're doing right there? You'd never shift as hard as what, we're seeing here. You'd never shift this hard because you'd never run up and hit a ball. 
But this shows that you can shift that heart and recover so you can get the full shift into that front hip and then still swing and return and end up in the middle. Okay. So, you know, we're worried about just shifting a little bit. Well, if you know the moves, if you know the rehearsals, you can actually practice shifting so hard that it's over exaggerated. And when that happens, then you're showing yourself um, that you don't have to leak ever. Right. So this is a Mattingly walk with a swing, as you can see. Um, and I'm, I'm showing you how to do it in a confined space. Notice my hips aren't really turning, but I have full rotation of my body. Why? Because my lower body is the engine mount for my upper body to rotate. I mean, look, I can rotate my upper body as far as I want. Okay. Shift there. Now notice I keep my back foot on the ground. Why? Keep my back foot on the ground to shorten the timeline of my swing. Now from there, I can very easily go into a return. And notice I'm talking about getting into that front hip. So I'm sh what I'm doing here is I'm showing you that you can't really swing until you get into that front hip, your front hip and you're swinging. But all, of course, you have to recover and do a return after this. But I'm not doing that right now because that's actually not the rehearsal that I'm doing at, at that moment. And then you have more advanced moves where you're actually learning how to do the manning the walk and rehearse. Because look, when you shift, you got to know where you're going. You do a shift, okay, so you got to practice that. You'd be amazed at how hard this is for people to do this workout, just rehearsing, and then you work, so then, and then you do the man and what, staying sideways and learn how to use your top hand. But look, I'm not opening up. I'm staying closed so that I can be on time. Notice when I use my front arm here, lock it in, and I swing. My shoulder really doesn't open. I'm still shifting and I'm using my shift. I'm never stopping my shift. Look, I land, but I never stop shifting. Look at my back heel, comes off, it's still coming off as I'm shifting my weight, which means I never stopped shifting. And notice I didn't really have to open up. And then you go into the shift and swing. And if you were to open up at all, and I'm kind of looking sideways because you're trying to stay on the ball and notice that you're continually shifting as you're swinging. Notice the back heel's off, off the ground. Cross your face is where it's the strongest. So these are some things and some examples of rehearsals that uh, you need to learn in order to become a great hitter. And this takes time. I mean, in the first three modules, a new module opens up each week in my program. And in the first three modules, you learn the 12 touchstones. You learn the 12 natural moves that it fixes 99 out of 100 problems before they come up. And you learn how to rehearse each one. You learn how to rehearse them so you could be standing in line, standing in the dugout, standing out on the field, getting ready, watching the pitcher, doing whatever. Being able to prepare your mind, your body, and your emotions so you can walk up to that plate, you get your pitch, and you hammer it. You become the hitter that the guy or young gal throws the pitch, and you're the one that's able to hammer it. And when you start hammering the pitch that they hope you miss or foul off, then they start getting nervous. And you don't get as – look, guys that can hit don't get as many off-speed pitches as the person – as the people who, who can't hit. Because they get ahead of you. They'll throw you something, a fastball, let's say you foul it off. Then, shoot, they're ahead. They can throw curveball, 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 curveball. And then you probably end up swinging, 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 and strike yourself out. You're 0-2, and then you strike out. Well, good hitters, they don't let them get that far. So these are the types of things that we do when we learn how to rehearse. So hope that helps out. So click the link below. If you'd like to be on the list to get into our Q&A group, there's no cost. We just would love to have you there and to answer your questions and to get you moving during this really difficult time while you're at home. And we'd just like to be a support for you and you get your questions answered, and you figure out what you got to do during this time when everyone's restless so that you can get ready, so you can have a better understanding of what you need to do as a hitter to be prepared, to be able to stand in line and get ready to hit, even though you're not, you haven't taken batting practice, be in the dugout, get ready, 
be in the on deck circle, know exactly what you got to do. So get that process started, get it rolling. So click the link below, give us your email, and we will give you some more information as to when we're going to begin. I look forward to seeing you there.